Sarah Brady of Iron Fire. I'm here just the day after the 2024 UTMB with men's champion Vanson Breer. Vanson, how are you? Pretty good, thanks. Yeah, yeah, honestly, not too bad. Okay, and you won UTMB. How does that feel? Uh, yeah, I don't know that it's hit quite yet. It will take uh, for sure at least a couple of days to like fully sink in, but. Uh, I think just taking it like one thing at a time and uh, mostly in, like, being able to enjoy with like friends and family was so special and like okay. going through lots of text messages and things it's uh, uh, honestly it's pretty special. Okay that's amazing it's amazing as a French runner as well to win your big home race. Yeah I think UTMB has gotten so big now and it has a like a pretty broad impact uh, even outside of France but uh, yeah mm -hmm. I guess arriving and it's when towards the end of last eight stations where people are starting to like sing along with my name i was like oh okay yeah something I, yeah. yeah hadn't anticipated for that yeah something very special mm -hmm. um and just because this is our first interview with you um we just like a little background um on you as a runner so i could find like trail races going back about 10 years and before that were you like a, a track runner or a road runner what's your background yeah so i've run track uh so I guess for context in France, sport in school is like all, very small, almost like inexistent compared to like the, the US where it's okay. so big and, and uh, it's like a big deal if you do a sport with your school. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I have, I've run track and cross country, but not at any like super competitive level. Um, okay. I have lots of friends that did much better than I did. Mm -hmm. uh, but I also, I grew up in this area and I've always had just a, Lots of inspiration to go spend time outside and whether it was hiking with my grandparents when I was a little kid or, okay. or um, yeah, cycling, skiing in the winter. I've always been like very active overall and never okay. like super competitive per se. Okay, very good. Yeah. So you've always been in the mountains? Yeah, yeah, yeah. a little bit. Okay, yeah, yeah. great. Um, and then I've seen you've raced a bit in the US. Um, you won the Gorge Waterfalls 100k last year. Mm -hmm. And then I think you won the Kodiak 100 miler by like two hours. <laughs> Yes, yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so, uh, we, um, so I met my wife actually here at UTMB the first time oh, in uh, 2017 okay. and then 2018. She Happy was, anniversary. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. She was at Hoka at the time, but uh, yeah, we had, we had done long distance for a bit and then I moved to the US uh, okay. both to move in with her and, and pursue a professional opportunity with Hoka. Okay, um, but I think Gorge Waterfall came at the right time of... Uh, post-covid no racing kind of period yeah. and also we had just moved to portland oregon as okay. part of like a new new office opening for hookah um and it was a race that sounded really cool to participate because the the free trail team is as well like part like mm -hmm. dylan notably like putting it on and and the uh, trails are just amazing up there so yeah yeah that was a cool one and already in the kind of a the thought was to try and get towards, uh, okay, what would it take to get to UTMB? Okay, so. amazing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and then you moved back here earlier this year? Yes, we just moved back, uh, well, moved for, for my wife, but moved back for me uh, okay. yeah, in April. Yeah, so very okay. recently. Yeah, mm -hmm. very good. Um, and then you're different to a lot of like the men's top runners because you were racing mostly against professional full-time athletes, but you have a full-time job with Hoka. So how does your training work around that? Do you think you do less volume than some of the others or how do you fit it in? Um, I don't know. I, 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 I guess I don't know everyone's schedule and per, yeah. like specifically. I'm not too much into looking at what everyone is doing super okay. precisely. I have enough, we have enough friends that like, uh, do that sport very, very competitively. So, competitively, so I know roughly like what the levels are. Um, for me, I try to adapt with how my schedule allows, not just with work, but also like other things in life. Like, of course. I absolutely love uh, running and trail running, but it's also very important for me and for us to have balance with other mm -hmm. things. And sometimes we have weekend plans that do not involve any sort of okay. running activity. That's coming up in the next few weeks. It's going to be very exciting. Yeah, great. <laughs> um, but then my work schedule also allow me to be a bit flexible with uh, maybe I don't have always like a nine to five very precise thing. Okay. Um, I think Hoka as a company has, especially in the last few years post COVID, made it very clear that employees should take the time, even if it's in the middle of the day, to go do their workout or things. So um, 
yeah okay. just definitely leaning into that and uh, trying to make things relevant from the different aspects yeah okay very good and then just to talk about the race um, so you weren't you weren't like someone who started in the middle and crept up you were kind of in the top 10 from from the go so um, in the like opening part of the race was that the plan for you to just try to stay in touch with the front runners or were you just running your own race and that's where you ended up uh, maybe a bit of both. I, I had ideas of what my splits were, were supposed to be and so uh, it's funny because I'd never run this course but like I know it so well because I've followed this mm -hmm. race so many times. Um, so I was not going in the full unknown and I didn't feel like I was going way too fast. Like I, I was yeah. according to my splits, uh, in fact I was thinking that some runners would go a lot faster at the mm -hmm. beginning. So I was surprised to be with uh, like Tom and then Jim on the run towards uh, Le Contamine. Uh, but then I also was very focused on like, how am I feeling? What is okay. the right pacing for me? Um, actually, right after Le Contamine, I took uh, maybe a little longer than others at the aid station. Mm -hmm. And I took the next climb up to uh, Col du Bonhomme uh, rather easily. Okay. Um, so another group caught up on me. Uh, Katie Shaw caught up on me as well. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, it's not until the following climb up to Col de la Seine that I started to feel better and okay. then um, yeah. I moved up. Okay. Um, and then when you first found yourself in podium position, um, how did that play out? Was it a case of you like hunting down the runners in front or did people just naturally come back to meet you? Yeah, it's funny because I, um, as I was saying, I was really trying to focus on like how yeah. I was feeling and what pacing yeah. was right for what I thought I could sustain for yeah. 20 mm -hmm. plus hours. Okay. Um, yeah. Because I was not going, was like I'm gonna run under 20. Like yeah, that's, you know? yeah. Just, okay. um, but I guess it's starting at Col de la Seine. I caught up with a lot of runners, and then eventually uh, caught the. Well, Jim was still in the front, but uh, okay. caught Germain, Tom, Ben, and I can't remember who. who, who there were four mm. of them, but uh, I felt really easy. And then okay. when I was following them in the group, I felt like really comfortable on the climbs okay. and the descent. So um, I. I didn't. I, I still don't remember if I wanted to put an attack or if I just yeah. wanted to get in the front of that group. But naturally, yeah. I was just climbing faster when I didn't have someone in front of me. Okay. So then I caught up on Jim, and that's where I realized yeah. like, oh, that means that now I'm I'm taking yeah. the lead. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Well, <laughs> um, and then it was around Kermayer at halfway where you found yourself in front. And how did that feel? Was it was it like kind of scary? Was there a new pressure in the race then? Um, I think I, I was really, even when I eventually realized like, okay, that means that now I'm in the front, I kept focusing on like, how am I feeling? And yeah. what is what does that mean for my own race and my pacing? And I was trying to put aside the fact that, okay, for now I'm in the lead, but maybe two hours from now I'm going to feel like crap and I'll yes. have to deal with a big crisis moment. Mm -hmm. And so if I take five minutes or three minutes on this climb, those are three minutes that I took yeah. and they're with me. Um, so. I think that's kind of mindset that I had is like, okay, okay for now, I'm, I know that I'm not overdoing it. I'm reason, yeah. reasonable spacing for me and uh, kind of being that mindset of uh, if things are going well, expect that they're not going to go well for that much longer and yeah. prepare for when they're not going well. Okay, yeah. that sounds like a good strategy because you can very easily lose like an hour in this race towards the end if you don't take the three minutes when you need it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think. I think we were discussing with some friends of how like, especially with the timing of the start at 6 p.m., the fact that it's a night race for the, the mm -hmm. elite field, everyone goes through rough patches. Of course, like, yeah. It's compared to, I don't know, like Western States this year where it's felt like yeah. everyone has it fully dialed and it's like yeah. on the entire time. Yeah. At UTMB, uh, yeah. you have to navigate maybe more parameters with temperature change, not, not this yes. year as much, but a little yeah. bit, yeah. So. There's a lot of variables, yeah. Mm. And then for a time, um, past Mayer and almost as far as Valerie you were ahead of course record pace. Uh, were you just trying to ignore that and yeah. keep cool? Okay, yeah. <laughs> yeah I, and were people telling you the whole time? I think I was still in that same mindset of yeah. like, at some point I'm going to fall apart and I'll yeah. have to manage that. Okay. Uh, but you didn't really. <laughs> well, yeah, I mm. think I was trying to get information on what the splits were behind to mm -hmm. just get an idea of, okay, like how am I putting more gap or is yes. are they coming back on me? Um, but I had this firm idea that like yeah, at some point I'm going to not be able to hold the space because okay. 
I was kind of like dividing by section. I was like, okay, I'm going to push the climb up to Grand Col Ferret and then mm -hmm. the whole descent. Okay, if I feel good, I'll try and push, push, push. Okay. But um, I was not thinking of the timing, the final time. I think maybe, yeah, they got closer. I was like, wait, yeah. how, how much is left? How, yeah. many, how much do I have time? Okay, mm -hmm. maybe I can finish under 20 hours and just yeah. that. I think Amazing. Jim deserves to have this course record, to be <laughs> yeah. honest. And I think also that the course might change a little bit from year yeah. to year. But as I got closer, I was like, it would be really cool to run under 20 hours. Of for course, sure. yeah, it's yeah. amazing. Um, and then how was like the final descent into Chamonix and running through the town? Um, so I uh, now famously, because of the Flegeret station, I forgot a flask at Valorcine. I did okay. have my full capacity because I had a Ziploc that uh, is also capacity to carry water. Mm -hmm. But I was very dehydrated on the climb up to La Flegere. Oh no. So okay. uh, I think with the heat and all the people around, I was starting to get like a little, yeah, just dizzy yeah. And with dehydration. And so with that context i was even more focused on not falling not tripping yeah. on anything yeah and i ended up tripping on the rock literally like <laughs> in the last minute on the descent like just before we get on the road yeah and it was so you just fell into town <laughs> I, did, I, i didn't fall but i hit like yeah. really hard and it was actually oh, no. like super painful for like the first part of my run into town so oh, i was gosh. like oh no it's like ruining the moment of just yeah. emotion <laughs> that's um, funny because the women's <laughs> leader finished hobbling as well <laughs> I, yeah at first i was like i just literally broke my toe like there's no oh, other way God. this is so painful but yeah. i prefer that it happened in the last mile than in the first yeah know, for so. sure okay brilliant <laughs> yeah. Um, and then I know you've probably just taken time to absorb all of this, but have you thought about the rest of the season? Is there another race in you or is this it? Season as in uh, calendar year? No, I, I mean, yeah. I'm, right now I'm really looking forward to not having our schedule revolved around my training and having mm -hmm. like, other things that we set on the agenda. Yeah. Uh, we were discussing, we just moved here from the States and we actually have some like friends coming to visit and uh, we have a new apartment that we're like building out and stuff so um, yeah it's nice to have other areas of focus and of uh, yeah mm. I'll take the time to digest before thinking of other things that I'll put on like racing yeah. calendar and whatnot yeah that okay. will come when it comes but yeah not now. very good yeah mm -hmm. that sounds reasonable <laughs> um, thanks so much for fitting us in I'm sure you're very in demand yeah, yeah, today of course, um, yeah, yeah. and enjoy your recovery thank you so much yeah <laughs> pleasure talking to you yeah. you too <laughs>